Well, for today's Touch Base and Soul segment, we're pleased to be joined by a rising writer and actor, Simon Clark. Simon's originally from Australia. He came to Korea in 2012 with uh, no intentions of acting originally. However, he is currently rehearsing for the Soul Players 2019 production of The Birds after landing the lead role. So Simon is with us in the studio today to talk more about this uh, upcoming work, not only as an actor, but also as a novelist, as well as uh, give his overall thoughts on the acting scene here in South Korea. Simon, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you grew up in Australia. You studied theater and film production, uh, working in those respective industries. It might be a cliche, but you think, okay, you're from the West, you study film and production. Uh, you might think, I want to go to Broadway, London's West End, Hollywood even. Sure. Um, what was the journey to eventually come to Korea like? Korea was almost happened on a whim. I had a friend who I'd studied with at university, a theater buddy, who had mentioned living here as an English teacher and spoke very highly of it. And I had, at the time, honestly started to shy away from the acting stuff. Okay, I had okay. done a few too many extra jobs and my passion for it was fading a little bit. And mm. I just came here as a means to see something new. I'd always wanted to explore Asia and then suddenly found myself being swept up in the scene here and getting involved all over again. So because I'm from LA and for us when you live there we have this sort of image of the the struggling actor the guy who's paying his dues kind right. of going on auditions waiting tables and hoping for the big break um you were more at a point of your life where you're saying per- perhaps I'm going to pursue another path uh, which led you to come to Korea but then sort of I guess the passions were rekindled and the opportunity sort of presented itself to kind of come back to that side of your career right yeah yeah I was happy to focus more on the writing stuff i felt i could take that anywhere Mm. uh but the the acting i just found just through meeting people through the expat community here these possibilities just started popping up i i actually had a friend how i got back involved the friend was a director of uh for the soul shakespeare company Mm. and someone had dropped out of a play they were doing titus andronicus and my partner at the time had never seen me act and he asked me if I would feel comfortable to jump in and take over a role that someone had left. Mm. And I did that and just through the course of that production I realized I was back okay. in it. You you mentioned the writing, how that sort of uh location independent you can you can pretty much do that anywhere. Uh-huh. Uh you are a pub- published novelist as well as a playwright. Can you talk about that and even this uh recent novel that you wrote? Sure, sure. Uh so when I first arrived, uh, there was a lot of other um, English teachers in our orientation group, and I found many of them had come from similar creative mm-hmm. degree backgrounds. So I started a writers group with uh, some of the people there, and throughout the course of that process, we were I was bringing short stories and poetry, and the, the notion of a full novel was quite daunting, but I quickly realized... I was bringing pieces every week. If I just started to bring chapters, it would eventually lead to something larger. And then that led to the completion of my first book. And then from there, I was encouraged to try other things, such as writing for stage. Uh, I wrote a play for a burlesque company also. And I'm currently now working on a a fantasy novel, uh, something a little larger than my first one. Is it one of those things like, who's your favorite child when you talk about you like the writing better, you like the acting better, or you can't choose between one or the other? Or I think I like the writing better simply because it's all on me. Mm. You know, I think p- deep down I'm a little bit of a control freak when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I know with the the best part about theater is the collaboration, right. but it's nice External to be able to... External factors out of your control that... Of course, yeah. yeah. It is nice to be able to essentially go to your cave and then come out with this yeah. thing at the end and say, this is it. Make of it what you will. When you talk about your uh, playwriting, uh, the short play, The Zoo, that you wrote, it was a finalist for the Soul Players 10-minute play festival. So I think as the name implies for our listeners, it's a, it's a short play right. competition. It's been running for uh, a number of years now. Uh, so obviously, congratulations for that. But we have a difficult time of trying to even squeeze 
10 minute uh, radio segments within an allotted time frame. How challenging is it to write a play that sort of gives the audience the full grasp of a theater experience within a 10 minute time frame? Hmm, I think the 10 minute time frame is actually a blessing in a way because it allows writing a one act, a two act play is a lot more work, obviously, than doing something shorter. Mm -hmm. And having the shorter time frame allows people to experiment with genres and styles that might be more difficult to sustain for a 90-minute thing. So we had a very interesting horror piece, which is a genre you don't often see in theater this year. Uh, The play I did, The Zoo, was about some humans, essentially, in a zoo enclosure speaking to essentially interacting with the audience a little bit. And there was Mm. something that I think, while it could be developed into a longer piece, it was a good way to test the waters with this 10-minute format. Your um, acting as well, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Soul Players? We understand it's it's an English speaking theater company. It's actually been around uh, for quite a while, founded in 2001. Uh, how did you first get involved with them and talk about the uh, the recent experience right now with the birds? Sure. Uh, I got involved with the Soul Plays just through an audition. They have on their social media, they list when they're having events for new shows. And I actually auditioned for a 10-minute festival. It would have been about four years ago now. And actually got the part, chickened out, didn't take it and then a year later why was that i just i wasn't sure if i wanted to go back to acting at okay. the time and then doing the titus andronicus play i mentioned many of the people involved with that also had fingers in soul players i went back auditioned again and they do one main stage production per year the 10 minute play festival and also the rocky horror picture show mm. once a year and the birds is their big main stage play for next year, they've got a really strong cast, and it's an interesting play. It's not often performed. It's a the original play is two thousand five hundred years old, but it has been adapted in I believe the nineteen forties. So it's going to be a really unique experience, I think, for anyone that comes out and sees that one. When you um, talk about uh, where your career is at right now um you you discussed your beginnings in in australia and how uh, perhaps you were considering other career options at the time coming back to korea maybe um uh, really finding uh, your creative spark to continue both uh, writing and and acting it seems like two completely different universes here uh, hmm. when you compare australia or Korea or even Europe or the United States in terms of this so-called scene. I think everyone who's in Korea knows about Taehangno and, and of course, right. the Korean theater scene, which is a very vibrant and and uh, dynamic uh, industry. But what would you say, would you, I, I, maybe not pros and cons, but how would you compare the Australian uh, acting theater uh, industry and Korea? I think the biggest difference is... And most of my experience comes from the expat theatre scene. So I'm speaking to that. It's still quite young. And as a result, it doesn't necessarily have the built-in hierarchy that has been going back decades. It's very easy if you want to do something. The barriers to do it are usually self-imposed. There are always people to work with Mm -hmm. and means to put on productions and try new things if you have the passion to do that yourself. What about, I mean, it's it can be a difficult subject, but the idea of putting food on the table. I know it's very competitive and right, it can right. be very cutthroat in Australia or uh, other places uh, in terms of trying to make it. Um, is it is it different here when, when you're talking about this, you say it's an expat sort of driven uh-huh. uh, phenomenon, but the, I, I imagine there's still competition. I imagine there are people who would like to do this as their vocation, as, as, as sure, a way to make sure. a living. Yeah, I think... A lot of the people uh, are still working predominantly as English teachers, and that's a a job that grants them ample free time to go out and pursue these kind of things. There are people that have transitioned over into... There's a lot of uh, work for voice actors Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. even commercial stuff, but that can be a bit more complicated visa-wise for 
uh, foreigners living here. In terms of then, um, I, I imagine you have colleagues uh, both in the expat scene as well as, as Korean uh, theater colleagues as well. Uh, the, would you say there is a system that is different or once you have people in place and you have a production you have in mind, is, is the uh, creative process and the production process of uh, getting something out to the audience, is that pretty much the same as in Australia as in Korea? Um, I think the thing here, I've just found the Korean scene to be supportive in a very earnest way. Mm -hmm. if, if people are putting something on, you see those theaters are always full, even if it's initially uh, peers or friends or acquaintances. Sure. People are very willing to support art being produced here in a way that I have was really surprised to see. And now... You think that's different from other countries? Uh, speaking only to Australia, yeah. I'm, I'm sure... Most of the times when I would go and see a show, it was very. There was more of people that would just go and watch theater as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, I, I find a lot of people that this is their first experience of theater. Like the the Ten Minute Play Festival, for example, has maybe sixteen shows, sixteen ten minute shows, and as a result, you have all these people bringing their friends right. and work colleagues, and many of them have never seen theater before, but they're all willing to go out and support the people involved and giving their time and it's it's really encouraging to see that work rewarded and paid attention to obviously there there is an expat market uh, of of people who are potential uh, consumers or, or audience members um, would you say that the the, the korean uh, audience is also growing in, in terms of uh, what what you and your colleagues are doing yes absolutely uh, i was recently in a play called uh, done by a group called The Collective, uh, Romeo and Juliet, and their uh, mantra or mission statement, as it were, is essentially to produce more diverse casts on stage, and that includes more Korean people, people of color, and I could notice like a distinct difference in the audience. And most of these shows, if not all of them, have Korean subtitles, mm -hmm. and they are... So it's accessible to the wider public. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, so um, just as a final thought, because our audience is uh, both domestic here, but also global in terms of international listeners who have an interest in Korea, and uh, they may be considering coming here, and you might mm -hmm. go the uh, perhaps the more typical route of uh, going in through education, or you might try to find another way. What, what, what advice would you give anybody who's coming here as, so, uh, as, as an artist, as someone who has mm. a creative sort of... Uh, itch to fill, but they would like to live here, but wondering if it's something that they can actually feasibly do. Sure. I, I had a strange experience on my way over here. I was on a flight. For some reason, I don't know if it's the time of day or just the scheduling, but it was only myself and one other heavy set businessman on the plane. And we ended up talking. He had <laughs> lived in, been bouncing between Seoul and Brisbane for... Oh, he was an expat. The last decade, okay, okay, yes. Okay. And he gave me some advice that I think has stuck with me all these years. And he said, don't say no to anything. Like within reason, if an opportunity presents itself, mm. take it. And I think it can be very daunting for a creative to put themselves out there in right. a public setting. But the rewards are always worth it in my experience. I think if you seek out opportunities, that's great. But also don't be afraid, even if it seems like extra work, in the long run, I think it's always worth it, particularly in this time and place. Well, that's great advice. Simon, we thank you for joining us, kind of sharing your story with our audience. Obviously, best of luck to you, and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Thank Thanks you. so much.